Hello friends, welcome to my channel Learning Electronics. In this lecture, we are going to study buck converter. In the part 1 of buck converter, we are going to discuss first important features of the buck converter. Then we are going to see the working of the circuit. Then we are going to discuss the use of different components used in the buck converter. In the next class, we are going to see the analysis of this buck converter in the part number 2. So, so before starting this video, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon so that you can get more updated videos from here. We know that in every converter the input power should be equal to the output power for lossless system. So if we are considering this switch SW as lossless then only the input power will be equal to the output power. Therefore this buck converter is a DC equivalent of AC transformer that transfers the AC power to the load and the basic function of this buck converter is to step down the output voltage or load voltage but this circuit boosts the output current that means in this circuit the load voltage V0 will be smaller than the source voltage Vs but at the same time the load current I0 will be greater than the source current Is. This buck converter is also called as voltage to current converter due to the use of this inductor that opposes the rate of change of current through it therefore basically it is converting the input voltage to current. Therefore, this buck converter has three names. First one is voltage buck converter because the output voltage is smaller than the input source voltage Vs and it is also called as current boost converter because the output current or load current will be greater than the input current Is. It is a voltage to current converter because of the presence of this inductor which opposes the rate of change of current through it. Now, let us see some important features related to the circuit diagram of this buck converter. First point is during fault conditions of the load di by dt is limited by the inductor here this is the circuit diagram of buck converter here you can see in the load side we have connected one inductor so whenever there is a fault in the load at that time what happens a heavy current flows through this load to the ground like this so this heavy current will be limited by this inductor present at the output side. Second point is that high voltage dating switch is required. Here you can see the switch SW is connected in series with this source. So in this buck converter we know that the buck converter is always used to step down the input voltage that means the input voltage Vs will be greater than the output voltage V0. So this high input voltage should be handled by this switch SW which is present in series with this source voltage here. Therefore high voltage rating switch is required in the buck converter. Third point is that input current is discontinuous in nature. Here you can see whenever the switch is in the on condition at that time it will act as short circuit. So in the short circuit condition the source will be connected with the load but whenever this switch SW is in the off condition at that time it will act as open circuit. So during the open circuit condition the load will be disconnected from the source therefore the source current Is will become discontinuous in nature in the buck converter. Fourth point is that smoothing filter is normally required to provide single polarity output voltage and unidirectional current. In case this input DC signal is produced by the rectifier at that time what happens there is a harmonics in the DC signal. So if there is no smoothing filter in the input side this harmonic present in this DC signal will be introduced in the supply line. So to reduce this harmonic present in the input Input signal we use a LC smoothing filter in front of this SW switch that means in this place between this SW switch and this DC voltage source we use a LC smoothing filter which will provide a single polarity output voltage and unidirectional current. Next is use of different components in the buck converter. This is the simple circuit diagram here. We are connecting one resistance R and we are taking the load resistance to be RL here. Now using this circuit we can find out the output voltage by using the voltage divider rule. So we will get output voltage V0 will be equal to source voltage Vs into load resistance RL divided by RL plus R which is the total resistance of this circuit. So let this be equation number 1. This method is called as resistance method and if we want to find out the efficiency of this circuit. What will be the efficiency of this circuit? will be equal to output power upon input power. Output power formula is V0 into I0 and input power formula is Vs into II. Here we are taking the input current to be II. This is a series circuit. The input source is connected in series with the load. Therefore, the input current will be equal to the output current. 
therefore this output current this input current will be cancel out and we will get efficiency is equal to output voltage upon input voltage vs so from this equation we can find out the output voltage upon input source voltage is equal to rl upon rl plus r now if we are taking the input source voltage to be equal to 80 volt and output voltage equal to 20 volt we are taking then what will be the efficiency of this circuit efficiency of the circuit will be equal to 25 percent so that means this efficiency is not acceptable so in this case what we will do we will replace this resistance r with a switch s and this switch s is operated at very high frequency so in this circuit diagram if this switch is in the on condition it will act as short circuit like this so when it will act as short circuit what will the output voltage output voltage will be equal to input source voltage vs so if we are taking the source voltage to be 80 volt then output voltage will also be equal to 80 volt when switch is on condition when the switch is in the off condition okay at that time what will be the output the source will be disconnected from the load therefore the output voltage will be equal to zero when the switch is in the off condition now we know that the duty ratio d is equal to on period of this switch divided by the total time period t and the average output voltage of this buck converter is given by duty ratio into source voltage vs and if we want a output voltage of 20 volt from this 80 voltage source then we have to take the duty ratio 0.25 volt that means for lossless conversion from 80 volt to 20 volt we have to take the duty ratio 0.25 volt now if we put the values of duty ratio and uh, source voltage vs is equal to 80 volt in this equation we will get v naught is equal to 0.25 into 80 which is equal to 20 volt that means when we are taking duty ratio is equal to 0.25 volt then only we are getting the output voltage is equal to 20 volt and this is the lossless conversion when we want output voltage is equal to 20 volt from 80 volt source but in this case if we draw the waveform then we will get this is the average output voltage which is equal to 20 volt and this is the peak voltage which is equal to 80 volt okay so here we can see that when switch is in the on condition at that time maximum voltage which we are getting output voltage is equal to 80 volt we are getting okay but the average output voltage is equal to 20 volts so here we are getting the voltage spikes when we are using this switch in place of this resistance r so this is one problem of this circuit diagram and one more problem is there when the switch goes into the on condition this input source pushes the current at very high speed due to which current spikes are produced at the output so this circuit has two problems first it is having a ripple in output voltage and it is having current spikes at the output okay to reduce the voltage ripples we connect a capacitor across this load rl and to reduce the current spikes we connect a inductor in series with this switch s why we are doing this because we know that the capacitor opposes the change of voltage through it therefore if we are connecting the capacitor the voltage ripples will be limited and if we are connecting the inductor in series with the switch and inductor opposes the change of current through it so the current spikes will be limited using this inductor in series with this switch s now after connecting the capacitor across the load and inductor in series with this switch the circuit diagram will look like this now when this switch is in the on condition it will act as short circuit in this condition when the switch is in the on condition this inductor l will store the energy in it and when the switch goes into the off condition it will act as open circuit but when the switch is in the open circuit at that time this inductor will no part to release its energy therefore due to high l di by dt the switch get damaged in this case so to provide the path for the inductor current what we will do we connect a free wheeling diode between this switch s and inductor l now our circuit diagram will look like this so this is the final circuit diagram of the buck converter here in the buck converter we are using igbt that is insulated gate bipolar transistor as switch which is a power semiconductor device and it has high switching speed therefore it is used in this buck converter circuit this capacitance of this capacitor is high to reduce the voltage taper and this capacitor is also used to bypass the 
AC so that we get a DC voltage at the output. So hope you have understood the topic. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe my channel. In the next class we are going to see the analysis of the buck converter.